All right, miners. Today, I'm going to teach you how to make a cumulus fractus node for Project Thunder. So let's get right into it. All right, guys, you can find this Google Doc sheet in the Flux Discord in the main announcement section. And this is a, just an overview of the cumulus fractus node that is essentially Project Thunder. Now, just to go over some of the requirements, you know, for this, some things have changed for the cumulus fractus node, which I know some people may be affected by this and may not be able to participate anymore um, because these, these requirements are not the same as a typical cumulus node. There's been a few changes. The disk write speed is now down to the 80 uh, megabytes a second, and that's so you can run the actual OS on the... Uh, mechanical drive so you don't have to have an SSD and then mount a second um, drive to where your RAID is or where your 10 terabytes are so you could just run it straight off the 10 terabytes now the only bad part about this is is that instead of being 25 up and 25 down it's actually going to be a hundred down and a hundred up so a lot of people that are on coaxial like a lot of co people who have Comcast um, will not be able to participate because they get like 1.2 gigs down and then they only get like 30 or 40 up. So they won't be able to participate. So this is going to be for a lot of people on fiber who have symmetrical connections. Other than that, though, the requirements didn't change at all. Still the two cords, four threads, eight gigs of RAM, 240 executions per second. That's all still the same. Those are the only changes as far as to be a cumulus fractus node which is uh project thunder so to be to be able to participate in this right now it is only on the test net i did do a video on the test net so if you guys are interested in that you guys uh, i'll leave a card up top here if you guys want to to learn how to actually participate in the test net this is good in case you guys don't know if your hardware is actually going to meet the requirements of a flux node um, because the test net coins they're free so if, say, you have a spare computer and you're like, oh, man, I don't know if this is going to pass the benchmarks. No problem, man. Go to the test net, you know, do all the instructions, and it's free. And that way, oh, wow, do this computer. It passes the benchmarks. Great. So this way, you know, hey, I could go proceed with my Cumulus node or Nimbus or whatever have you, what kind of node you're going to make. You do need to go through the full um, installation of the node before you, you know, before we get into this. So you will have to start the... Uh, follow all the instructions on the test net before you get to this part. So be sure to watch that video, guys. Hey, miners, Mining King here. Welcome to the Community 500 Giveaway, where I have partnered with several other YouTubers and we're working on a community project to give everybody in our community, our viewers, and give back to you guys during this time of the bear market. There will be 10 different prizes unique to everybody participating in the project. My unique item will be a RX 6700 XT signed by yours truly. We have partnered with Django Jax in his amazing art skills, and he has created 10 custom designs for us. There will be 50 shirts for each design. So this is a limited run of t-shirts. Each t-shirt will give you 50 entries in the Gleam giveaway. Don't want to buy a t-shirt? That's fine too. There's plenty of ways to enter free in the URL down below, so check the link out to get your free entries for Gleam. We will also be giving a portion of our proceeds back to a nonprofit organization called the Water Project Incorporated, which helps provide clean water to sub Saharan Africa. We will be hosting a live stream on YouTube to announce the winners on November 30th for the Gleam. Now, be sure to check out all my other partners that are participating in this giveaway because they have some awesome things as well. And just remember, the mining can gives you the most hashes, and I'll see you next time. So I am currently logged in on my uh, Cumulus uh, Thunder node here, which I named it Project Thunder. Now, we need to be able to manipulate the file, and just a, just a little uh, helpful you know, hint, if you're not familiar with Linux, um, you typically type ls to see all the files that are, you know, in the, where you are, right, as in the, in the directory or where you're sitting at on the system. Well, you will need to type in ls-all, 
or dash dash all to be able to see all the files because some of these files are hidden. Um, and all will show you everything. So just a little helpful hint if you're having a hard time seeing the files because I was just typing ls and I couldn't find it. So just a little helpful hint from my, my good friend, Mr. Yeti, always appreciated. So the next command you're going to need to type is going to be cd space dot flux benchmark. And what that's going to do is, is take us to the actual flux benchmark directory. So now that we're inside of this, uh, this folder or directory. So once you're in the folder, you may or may not see this file. It may not exist and that's okay. If it's not here, it will only exist if you've tried to enable multi node with the UPnP. So if you type this in and all you see is testnet, that's perfectly fine. So the next command we're going to enter is actually going to create this file, right? So it's going to be sudo uh, space nano space fluxbench dot config. And this will create the file whether or not it's there. So now that we're in this actual file here in this config file, we can actually manipulate a couple of things. One, this is where you can set the flux port or your multi node, if you wanted, it's the same thing as the UPnP. So let's say you wanted to have port number seven, right? So you can you would change it to one six one seven seven, or whatever you, whatever you wanted to have it as as you know, for your setup. But this is where the flux node port is actually saved in this config file. So just another little helpful hint right there. Now for Project Thunder to work, we need to actually um, enable it. So we need to type. We need to type thunder equals one. So that is essentially it. It's actually really, really simple. In order to save this, we're going to hold control and then hit X. And then it's going to ask us if we want to save this file. We're going to hit Y for yes. And then we're going to hit enter for the file name because we don't want to change it. We want to keep it the fluxbench.config file. We're going to hit enter. And there you go. We've successfully changed the Fluxbench config file for the practice node so that we can participate in Project Thunder. And once again, this is only on the testnet. So let's go ahead and I'll show you my Cumulus practice node. Okay, so I just took a picture of this because <laughs> I've been working on some other stuff, but and I, and I wanted to blur out my IP address, you know, security purposes. So anyways, um, as you can see, I have 11,000 gigabytes, which is equal to 11 terabytes of data, right? And the, and the reason that mine still says cumulus up here instead of fractus is only because of the actual write speed of my particular mechanical drives. So my mechanical drives are Seagate, Exos, um, enterprise grade drives. So they're really, really good mechanical drives. They have really good read and write speeds. Um, so this is why it's still labeled as a cumulus. If you do have some older, you know, spinning rust drives that maybe aren't as fast and they, let's say they get, you know, like a hundred or 120, uh, megabytes a second, they will, the label will change from cumulus to fractus. Don't worry. It's still a fractus node, but you will have to have that hundred up and hundred down. And I didn't use wonder shaper on this when I built it. Um, as you can see, it just, you know, kind of just hammered my network for a quick second here. But that is essentially it, guys. Um, that is how you make a, a Cumulus practice node um, for Project Thunder. Now, I don't know if it's gonna make financial sense to participate in this, like to actually go out and physically buy hard drives, right? Because it's gonna depend on what the incentives are gonna be like. It may only make sense if you have hard drives laying around like myself, where you, you have some hard drives where you can put them to use. I don't know what the incentives is going to be like. Is it going to be worth it to actually go out and purchase, you know, uh, actual 10 terabyte drives? Because 10 terabyte drives brand new. I think they're around like 200 bucks. So I know you can go out and go to eBay and get some used ones, you know. Um, so you could save a few bucks there. I don't know what the incentives are going to be like for the Cumulus Fractus node. Um, so we don't know if it's going to make financial sense or not to participate in this particular program, as well as you're going to need much faster internet speed, right? And I just believe because of the amount of data that's going to be coming on and off of the practice node storing that much data, right? Is they need that much, they need that high of a speed to, you know, obviously not slow down the network. 
So that's a couple things to keep in mind here. You're going to have to have 100 up and 100 down, um, as well as you have to buy a 10 terabyte drive. So, But you are allowed to use RAID, and I did. I set mine up in RAID. I have two 8 terabyte drives, so I have 16 terabytes available to me. So we don't know yet if it makes sense to actually participate in the Fractus node yet. It's going to depend on the incentives. They haven't announced that yet. So I will definitely be keeping you guys up to date for the Cumulus Fractus node. All right, guys, I hope this video was helpful. And uh, this is the Mining King giving you the most hashes, and I'll see you next time.